Thank you, Bill. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I guess that I hadn't seen that uh, Newsweek. You said Newsweek, Business Week, but um, but I think there's a lot of truth in that. So uh, let me. Uh, were any of you here at the previous? talk about three weeks ago? Most of you? Okay, well, then I won't do too much of a reprise of, of what I did then. Uh, just a couple of things that we need to remember, I think, that are really I important, and that is that the Federal Reserve System uh, is comprised of 12 private banks. They are not part of the government. They are private banks. Um, they are owned by the member banks, which are commercial banks like the City, uh, City Bank and uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, but also like Whitney uh, here in New Orleans, well, and in other parts of the South, Whitney. And um, the way this paper money that we have comes into existence, the U.S. Treasury, which is part of the government, of course, part of the executive branch, has printing presses. Uh, in the Bureau of Printing and Engraving. And the Federal Reserve System calls them and says, basically, here's how much money we want you to print for us. And then the Treasury acts as a commercial printer would and prints up to order what was asked for and then sells it to the Federal Reserve. But it sells it to the Federal Reserve for four cents per bill, okay? So whether it's a $1 bill or a $100 bill, the Federal Reserve only pays four cents for it. Well, obviously, the difference is profits, right? But it doesn't show up that way on the Federal Reserve's books. They deceive with their books. They obfuscate. Now, why would the U.S. government, the Treasury, sell paper money, which can then be issued at face value, for four cents per bill to a private banking group, a private banking cartel. And the answer is that the federal government spends a lot more than it takes in every year. Um, the government's fiscal year, uh, federal government's, uh, starts on October the 1st and ends on September 30th. There's a reason for that, which we really don't have a lot of time to go into, but, uh, but the reason essentially is uh, that Congress can't write a budget in three months, in six months. They can't even write one in nine months. Uh, a private, if a private business operated the way the Congress did, they would be out of business very quickly. So at any rate, in the most recent fiscal year, the preliminary estimates of the debt are $455 billion. That is, the Congress told the Treasury, which is the fiscal operation of the federal government, told them, spend, you know, uh, this money, collect the taxes, and the difference was $455 billion. Well, where do you get this $455 billion? Well, they have a printing press, and they could just print the money up. And if they just printed the money up, everybody would see it, right? The federal government spent this much money, took this much in taxes, and printed up the difference. Gee, when prices start going up because there was too much money, everybody would know what was going on. So instead, they obfuscate it. They sell this paper money to the Fed uh, at four cents on the dollar with the understanding that what? That when they go to borrow money, the Fed will buy, if not all of the IOUs that they issue. See, when they go to borrow money, they have to give IOUs, Treasury securities, whether they're notes or bills or bonds, that the Treasury will buy up those IOUs for them, from them, or at least a large part of them, so that there is a ready market for their debt. So they print the money, sell it to the Fed at four cents on the dollar, and then borrow it back, because that's what the IOUs are, and then they cover the deficit that way. Okay. Well, that's why they do it. It allows them to obfuscate the fact that the federal government is running these huge deficits and paying for it by printing money they can obfuscate that. The average person hasn't a clue that that's what's going on, you see? And notice they, they lie about this stuff because this stuff says Federal Reserve notes, okay? Doesn't say U.S. government money. But if you look in Title 12 of the U.S. Code, 
Let me assure you, I looked in there today, uh, again, just to check, and it says that these things are obligations of the U.S. government, not the Federal Reserve. They're obligations of the U.S. government, okay? But they don't say that on here. Um, anyway, so that's what they do. Now, let's, let's just back up a moment and say, oh, gee, $455 billion in deficits this year. How'd that come about? Well, it came about because basically they spent about $3 trillion and collected about $2 trillion, uh, well, $2.5 trillion in taxes. So if you spend $3 trillion and take in $2.5 trillion roughly, you've got to borrow the rest or you've got to print the money for it, and that's what they did. The federal government spent $3 trillion. $3 trillion. Let's say it's roughly 300 million Americans, $3 trillion. That's $10,000 for every man, woman, and child in America that they spent. And they collected about $8,500 in taxes for every man, woman, and child in America, which meant they had to borrow about $1,500, you know, $1,500 for every man, woman, and child in America to close the gap between what they spent and what they borrowed. And if you take this debt that they, or the deficits they had this year, and you look at what they've had in the past and accumulate them, you get what? You get ten and a half trillion dollars, roughly, that they owe in debt. But we have to be careful. That's just debts that they've issued IOUs for. I could come to you and say, lend me some money, and you say, okay, how much? And I say, a thousand dollars. And you say, well, okay, write me an IOU. So I write you an IOU. But on the other hand, I might come to you and say, let me $500, and you might just say, okay, so you want an IOU? You say, no, I don't, I don't want an IOU. I, you're good for it. Well, folks, that's what the way Social Security and Medicare are handled. The government has made promises to thee and me, huh, to pay us in the future. And that, uh, the, the, the present value of those accumulated deficits are estimated to be between 50 and 70 trillion dollars, okay? So in addition to the debt for which there are IOUs out there, there are debts where the government has just promised this stuff but hasn't given us IOUs. And they could have done that, right? They could have said, well, Bournette, when you get to be 65, here's an IOU that's payable each month after you get to be 65 for your Social Security. But they didn't do that. They don't do it that way, but they could, right? And if they did it that way, gave us all IOUs for our Medicare expenses and for our Social Security, why then we would see that they were in debt well over $50 trillion. That's something that we don't tend to think about too much. Um, anyway, so having, having said that, you know, I mean, what is the big problem right now? Well, basically... Americans have lived beyond their means. And who taught them to do that? The U.S. government. The U.S. government basically said to the American people, you can have it all, and you can have it all now. And American people said, okay, great, then let's do it. Sounds good to me. But the first lesson of economics that we refer to as opportunity cost says you can't have it all. And especially you can't have it all now. So, what the American people did was live beyond their means. And how did we live beyond our means? Well, we produced goods, and we used more goods than we produce. And how can you do that? You can do that if someone else produces goods and uses less than they produce, and they sell you the goods in 